just, you know, it was just kind of out of the blue, and okay, we'll sign it. And, and then they started gobbling up more and more acres, and it started spreading like wildfire, and then people started talking, you know, and with the one oak, we were aware by then of what was going on. Yeah, so there was a before. lot more talking about this pipeline that's going in. You know, I think the, the main thing is communication. The landowners and the people in the county need to communicate what, what it is we want and what we want for our communities. And, and we've done that. They've had community, community meetings like in LaGrange, you know, what do you want for your community, you know? And so they get a bunch of people together and kind of growth do you want? I don't know. It's no, we don't want little cities or little camps or little towns just springing up all over Goshen <laughs> County. You need to keep it kind of... It would be nice. Central. How does, well, you mentioned, is this the Economic Development Group having sure. these meetings? Yeah, I think it was. And I was wondering, how is the communication with industry? Like, what have you heard? For example, how deep are they going to drill compared to, like, what is your water table? now like where do you pull at what depth do you pull your water from here um our our water was just drilled two wells so we're about 200 feet okay. is where we get our water from and i think the aquifers around here are like 700 feet you know the deepest and they're going where they're going for the um Niobrara shale formation is a mile isn't it it's seven thousand maybe eight thousand feet so um, far under your water absolutely does that it, you know, it does, um, and uh, visiting with the guy that we dealt with for the seismic, for him to come to the seismographers to come in here, he says Wyoming, they case all their wells, but Wyoming makes them do an extra case through the aquifer part for more protection, to protect the water. And we talked with Dad about that, you know, he remembers. You know, even 50 years ago, he said the first thing we did was protect the water. Yeah, they case those wells and protect the... So I'm not really concerned, but I, I don't think anybody can say for sure that there won't be any problem with the fracking because nobody knows what the structures are underground. Oh, and they're still what doing kind of studies. You know, the University of Wyoming just had a big a big meeting on all of that, yeah, and so they're still... Oh, gosh. You know, and there are both sides to it, and... I guess we just wait and see at this point. We get the Casper paper almost every day. There's something about fracking in the Casper paper. We get it too. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. Does that raise your concern? Oh. Because there was, there was a quote from the Chesapeake Energy, uh, the head, saying uh, something about people who are worried about fracking. It's just, they don't need to worry about it. It's just a bunch of hype blown up by the media. What do you think about a statement like that? Well, I think that sounds like somebody in the oil company saying, you know, sure, you can say that. I don't, I don't know that they can say for sure. Oh, they can't. But I also think that historically, anytime you come up with a new technology or there's always a lot of fear and uncertainty and, and absolutely, I think mistakes are going to be made and things are going to have to be fixed and and what we can hope is that it's not irreversible or life-altering. You mean from a uh, mistake with the drilling or yes, something? Yes, and with the water table, and because that kind of an impact would be huge for people in this part of the country. Well, and the fracking the process alone requires so much water, so much exactly. water, you Do know. Do you have it available? I don't know. I guess Doug's put together uh, an agreement with him for the um, wells that he had for his sprinkler up there. But well, I and guess I think Taylor's did on the east end, too, did. and I don't know. I, that will be interesting, you know, if they're pulling out of our irrigation supply. But I think Wyoming, I think Wyoming protects its water resources. I think that there are rules and regulations in place that hopefully will prevail throughout all this. That's how I kind of like to look at it is um, there's all kinds of checks and balances in the industry, you yeah. know, because of past abuses. You know, people have made mistakes in the past. Well, now, so that's why it's so much more difficult to do it. You have to have your 
environmental impacts and they've done archaeological impacts and all kinds of stuff with the pipeline. Yeah. I'm sure they do the same thing for these pads that they're building, you know, the drill on, you know. I mean, it's just they have to do that kind of stuff anymore. Yeah, you know, I try to be optimistic about it. I'm well, that's I wanted to ask you. So what are some hopes? I mean, if, if it takes off. Do you have any hopes of what could happen? Or? <laughs> well, the wife comes home every day from school and says, have they started drilling yet? <laughs> <laughs> so I can retire? So I don't have to face those sixth graders anymore? Oh, that's <laughs> not true. Okay, well, once a week. It, well, you know, it would be nice to be able to think about retiring comfortably. Yeah, but boy, you... But you just mm, don't. No, you just can't. You know, I would like, I would like for my kids to be able to be out here. An opportunity. An right. opportunity. To raise an opportunity for that. Absolutely, right. that's pretty big. That would be a huge one, or to even be in Goshen County, have something to do in Goshen County, and and right now it's you know it's hard. I think a lot of communities in Wyoming, we see our kids leave and. Especially in agriculture, what what are they going to do? Come back and and live well, on what? Well, the farms and like I mentioned earlier, the farms and ranches have gotten so much bigger and so much bigger and so much bigger. You know, there used to be a lot of small ranches around here. So it's not like they can come back and buy a little place. It well, has to be really in the family, I think. Yeah, it does. It oh, it absolutely does. It does. Or else you have some other means of income. You know, there's a lot of ranches that have been bought around here because people have money and they don't know what else to do with it, so they invest in real estate. Oh, Absentee landowners, though. Yeah, we've had a couple not, of those. Not ranchers and farmers that are buying up. Oh, we for had the a, most part. We had an outfit from were they Alabama? Mm -hmm. Came up and bought a big ranch up here, and it's just a Keeps place. buying has continued to buy up and little he, little ranches that you know as as they get older and they're ready to retire and move on, well, if you want money, you've got to sell because all of your income is tied up in the in the land. You don't have a lot of disposable income when you're in agriculture. Oh, no. And all so they, you know, their kids aren't interested or have moved on, and so they sell out. Parsons did that with, you know, sold to the big outfit. Yeah, there's not much so they're gobbling up the do. little places, no. yeah. Right, right. I know Allie's got to hit the road soon. I want to kind of follow up or finish up with one question thinking about the schools because you from what you were saying there's some already some crowding in modulars in some cases if if energy development does take off how do you think these the schools are going to handle it you know i don't i don't know because i don't understand the whole economic development thing you know i think if if it does take off and goshen county is in line for some of that mineral money. Yeah, they'll be getting involved. Right but I also that. know that Wyoming, with it, you know, the districts have been fighting this forever and ever and ever, that the mineral-rich counties, that money stays right there, and then the poorer counties don't see any of that. So th they've been in lawsuits for years and years and years in this state with that. You know, so I, I don't know. I know that all over Wyoming, they've, there are modulars. Cheyenne has modulars, and Laramie has modulars, and Casper has modulars, and Gillette probably has lots and lots. So, you know, I'm not sure how how that looks if they're, well, I don't know. It'd be interesting. You think about it, cause oh, you absolutely. The room to use the staff for absolutely. You know, and we've tried to split classes in the past. Well, there's nowhere to put them. Our school is chock a block full, you know, there's no, even the closets we use for testing and small groups and because we are full, you know, we are seeing some smaller classes in the younger grades and who knows why that is. But, you know, I think Ocean County has lost people in the past and that has been a concern about, and if you lose too many kids, if the schools, these rural schools get too small, then we're looking at consolidating. You know, they've consolidated a ton in Goshen County already and no one wants to lose their school. That's the heart of a community. It is. Community. Oh, it absolutely is. And there are, you know, there are a lot of 
So I don't know. I would like to think that it would absolutely benefit the schools, whether they'd make larger classrooms or hire more teachers or more services. Absolutely. Well, like Hopefully, smart boards, and it's amazing mm -hmm. what those kids now have. Absolutely, a laptop for every kid. Absolutely, you know, you I like think that would. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Not me. Not you. Oh, we're too dependent on technology, is what I think. Way too dependent on technology. But, you know? <laughs> this is one of those we agree to disagree uh, on yeah. all the time. I can tell. Well, this is what is. kids do. This is the new world. Yeah, but it's leaving us vulnerable. That guy in Yuma, Arizona flipped the wrong switch and 8 million people went in the dark in Southern California here. See what I tell you, new ago. technologies and people are going to be but fearful. We don't know for sure <laughs> and new technologies. <laughs> okay. And we've already been immersed because we have smart boards and dot cameras. Oh, and good. But this is, you know, this is the new literacy. This is how kids learn nowadays. Yeah. You know, it's not so much paper and pencil anymore. Well, and they got and to it's be prepared progress, absolutely. Like we may think, oh gosh, you know, there's one more technology. They're going to be expected to know it. Well, and on the good, on the good end of that, we are so isolated right here and so insulated. It opens up the whole world to our kids. You know, we have kids that have never, you know, they might go to Nebraska and they might go to Colorado, but, but they don't have a clue how big the world really is. And so that really, it so opens up the world to them. So that's pretty yeah, big. That is. Do you have anything else? Or? Um, I think I'd like to know a little bit about the options of the um, leadership of our schools when they come here. Do you, I mean, do you feel like they would come up here to, you know, kind of know who you are? Yep. And be with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Their perceptions. People in Wyoming have a bunch of hicks, maybe. I don't know. Well, I kind of wonder. I, I and know. And you know, the industry, though, these were the landmen. These were the. Yeah, you but know, and then my dad talks about the landmen. Oh, they're just out to get whatever they can get. And, and they are. Well, so and I, I kind of separate the landmen from the oil field. Oh, and they are. Oh, I, I think they're completely different. What it was explained to me is those guys are wanting to get it as cheap as they can, so they don't want anybody to know that they're wanting to come in and buy a mineral rights. And this first that guy that approached us, you know, with a ten dollar offer, five dollars <coughs> started out with, you know, and then and then we were approached and it was up to twenty five, and so we told him, I mean, you know, you're a nice guy and all, but really, come on. And and he said, okay, but you have to sign. You know, we'll offer you the same, but you have to sign. And don't tell anybody. <coughs> tell your neighbors that this Absolutely. is what you signed for. And I guess it, they were just trying to get as cheap as they possibly could. And it wasn't it wasn't a week that I think you were offered fifty dollars. Oh, absolutely. And then it just and went so, up from there. The one you know, that really he was kind of a yeah, it wasn't real good. Yeah, I get, uh, the one that really got me is we have a neighbor up here. She's ninety three years old. They've lived on that ranch as long as our family's lived on that ranch. Hard scrambled, whatever they've had, they've. They've worked hard for it. She had an opportunity to make some money to, I don't know, give her security. If she needed to go into a care center or something like that, she'd have had enough money to do it. They at least replaced her 10 bucks an acre. Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's not good. When that I got the, 